here we have the UI of Reactor. Reactor was the panel management application that runs on the Airfly Pro, and with that we can configure everything. If I press a user button like that one, you get directly to the place where you would assign the action to this one. And you can see currently it's blank, it has no parameter assigned, but we could go edit this parameter and, and basically search up in one of the, the units like uh, assign it to something in DMX. Airfly Pro is a universal switcher panel. And that means you can control multiple brands of switching systems, such as Atom from Blackmagic Design, Tricaster, Kros. In this video, we'll be looking at vMix. But all the time, we are supporting more and more switcher systems. And one of the very cool things is that we have not just made a fantastic hardware product. On the software side, we have also designed configurations that makes it easy to set up and change between these many switcher systems very easily and at the same time retain some of the interaction patterns so that it will be easier for users to go between systems. Airfly Pro is delivered with Blue Pill Insight and this is our new platform and therefore it can connect directly to switches without any need for middleware. Uh, previously, for instance, with vMix, we had to have vMix Bridge that would connect you to the PC. But that's not necessary anymore. The panel is standalone. It's powered by a single cable connected to your network, and then it will connect to vMix or any other switcher. And furthermore, it's also modular. So you can have a product like the Crosspoint 48 extend your Airfly Pro, and that basically makes it into a mega panel, you can say. Other than that, you find all the classic Skahoy signature technologies such as OLED displays for labels and they have worldwide language support. There's also the premium Hall Effect T-Bar which has an LED ring and a state display on it. And of course, it's all driven by Reactor, the panel management application running directly on the Airfly Pro. As I mentioned, today we have an Airfly Pro and a Crosspoint 48 connected to vMix. So that's the system we'll be looking at. And the controllers are obviously here on the table in front of me. And over here we have a vMix computer. It's a pretty scaled down, has just a few inputs and some audio sources, but it's nice for us to be able to validate that what we are doing on the panels is also reflected in vMix. We also brought in a Canon camera here. There are some other cameras connected on the network to the whole system. So what is that? Yeah, well, we have a little section here for camera control. You can actually adjust PTC cameras if you need for convenience to, to do that as you are running your uh, production on the panel. And over here, we have the UI of Reactor. Reactor was the panel management application that runs on the Airfly Pro, and with that, we can configure everything. What you see right here is the home screen, and to just quickly guide you through what you see, you can identify the Airfly Pro right here. I can even uh, light it up in white to just identify the panel, and then you can see the uh, Crosspoint 48 on the side. So these two panels, are running out of the same configuration, which is Airfly Pro configuration for vMix, a pre-made configuration we have designed for you guys. And uh, it's called a, a medium configuration. That basically means that it has been designed to integrate these two units into a single unified control surface with direct access to 24 sources instead of the standard 12 sources that you would have if you chose the small configuration. You could do that. And if you change to small, it means that the Airfly Pro would then discard off the uh, Crosspoint 48. That wouldn't be used. You could just take it away. And then everything would be compressed down on a single panel here. So that's how easy it really is to get started with this massive configuration that we are going to look at today. I also want to point out that the, the blue is the color you're looking for here. We have a button for vMix inputs, and here you can basically offer alternative labels. This is where you put in UTF-8 characters, so you can have any language in the world shown on these displays. Right now, today, we are pulling those labels out of vMix, so the source names you give in, inside of vMix will be shown on the displays, but you can easily change that by offering an alternative label. Okay, let's have just a little bit of fun and write hello or hello which is, uh, includes a Danish special character. And then we also change the color of this one. So we can see basically over here, uh, when we have made this change, that we see a different um, uh, international characters in the display. And we also have a color identification of the channel on the LED bar right here. So that's how easy you do these things inside of Reactor. 
Apart from setting up the inputs on the switcher system, you also see that we have similarly a camera selector. And with that one, we are currently connected to a Canon CIN 300, also a Panasonic AWUE70, Sony BSEX 400, there's a JVC camera, there's a Bird Dog camera. And notice that these cameras are widely different. We have an NDI camera, we have uh, actually three Visca cameras, we have a Panasonic protocol and the Canon XC protocol. So it's possible to completely mix and match cameras. And if you want to add more, you just press this button. And then below we have something called Quick Class and we'll touch on that later in this video. On the far right in Reactor, this is where you see your devices you're connected to. Obviously, we are connected to vMix and that's the top device up here. It's connected, it has this IP address and so on. And if we scroll down, we notice that we are connected to three Visca cameras, the JVC, Bird Dog and the Sony. We also connected to a Canon camera and then the Panasonic camera and we are connected to a video router. So that's a lot of devices. As I said, Blue Pill, the platform inside our products here is very powerful and able to talk directly to all these devices uh, without any help from external servers or computer systems and so on. And Reactor is running directly on the AirFly Pro. Now, let's explore the panel a little bit in general, because now I've talked about the infrastructure and the vMix and the things we are connected to. The panel itself is basically laid out with two rows of buttons here, where the lower row is uh, what we call the preview row, and then the upper row is the active source on vMix. Other switcher systems call it the program row. But the beauty of the AirFly Pro is that nothing is labeled except these keys over in this section. Everything is just labeled with OLED displays. So that helps us to make these keys absolutely flexible. So you see the names of the sources, you see the functionality of the buttons up here in those uh, displays and we'll get through all that stuff. But if we look at the basics of the panel, we have a cut and if I press that one, you can see we make the cut in vMix. We have auto to execute an auto transition. We have fade to black that we can activate and deactivate once again. We have the shift key to access additional sources, additional 24 sources. So 48 all in all by the shift key here. We also have two user buttons that we can assign. Uh, just to give you a quick glimpse into that, if we go to the configuration tab inside of Reactor, then if I press a user button like that one, you get directly to the place where you would assign the action to this one. And you can see currently it's blank, it has no parameter assigned, but we could go edit this parameter and, and basically search up in one of the, the units like uh, assign it to something in vMix. So we could select that and then we could search for some action inside of vMix and then assign stuff to it here. But we won't go into details on that. It's just to show you that it can actually be pretty easy to navigate around and assign user functionality to these buttons because it's basically detecting what you're pressing uh, in the configuration tab. So that's an, a little adventure that is waiting for you inside of the AirFly Pro. Up here we have uh, overlay toggles, we have uh, start, stop streaming and recording and so on. So you see this stream on off, record on off, external on off, and we can also execute stingers. So I'm just executing stinger number one by pressing this button up here. Let's just quickly check that we have the basics in place. So I'm, I'm now directly selecting my source on the um, active the active source and then I am now directly selecting to preview on these buttons. So that's basically how the panel works. Let's offer some attention to the menu. The menu that we have up here is basically deciding what happens on our utility buttons. So um, we can select, we can, we can use them to delegate uh, to different buses. We can use it to execute shortcuts. We can use it to manage audio on our inputs. And then if we are back at the the mix menu, then we have specific functions related to the different mixes. So if we press the size of these buttons, which is, is a, it's a four way button. And if you don't know the concept of a four way button, it simply means that the button will detect edge presses, left and right, top and bottom, and we can then assign specific functionality to that. So what we usually do is we use the lower edge to just select something uh, or to rotate like on this one, just rotating through mix one, two, three, four. But up here on this button, we can use the, the sides of the button to go forth and back, just like if we had an encoder up to turn. So that brings a, an immense amount of flexibility to Skyhoy panels that we can do this. So we are now on mix one, which is um, the most fully featured mix at, of all. And when we are here, you see that the utility row of buttons offer us a lot of functionality. For instance, we can assign for our transitions. We have four transitions where we can say transition number one is going to be a wipe. 
transition two is going to be zoom. No wipe. No, 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 no. Let's let's keep it at zoom. Transition number three is going to be a fade. And then we can also set the transition time over here by using that four way button. So that's basically transition management right here. On the next item, we can manage clips. So we need to select the clip here uh, like um, like this one. And then we can basically run the clip, which is happening right now. You see that in the uh, preview. Uh, on the UI here, we are running this one. We can also pause it. We can enable looping. We can uh, choose uh, previous and next items, etc. So that's the next four buttons. And then we have a way to uh, execute directly some of the transitions, uh, right here, zoom, fade, and so on. That is our uh, transitions um, from um, um, that we, we can execute from here. Uh, then we have a bunch of user buttons if we continue, and those are unassigned at this moment. They are just holding a, a label, basically waiting for you to go into the configuration tab in Reactor, and then you can press this button, and then you can assign functionality to it, uh, like I hinted at just a moment ago. So that's what we have in, in the mix menu. If you go to mix number two, first of all, the program and uh, or the active and preview rows are now working on mix number two, and we have a limited set of things available to us here. For instance, these um, transitions go away. And then if we go to mix number three, we have um, yet again limited amount of uh, functionality depending on which source we have selected. For instance, if we on mix number three select this one, we will still be able to uh, run the um, the different media player functions uh, as we want. But I want to take you to the next thing, the buses. So if I press this one, what you basically see is that we have delegation on output number two, and that is set in the display. So if you look closely, it says output number two on these buttons. Uh, and by the way, if you notice that we have this camera selector open right here, it's because we basically are overriding that at the moment. I'll just toggle that off, and because I'll get back to this in a moment, but these um, 24 buttons are now purely assigned to give us delegation of the input source for output number two. And by simply just pressing, you get that input on output number two. And the output itself is adjusted on this button. So now it's output number three. Now it's output four. Now it's full screen, one, two, and so on. And notice the displays are always following along so that you know these. Uh, this is now delegation to full screen two on this uh, button up here. If we continue, what we find here is that the next button will basically just with a single press give us delegation for uh, uh, overlay number one or overlay number two. If I press the side here, overlay number three and overlay number four. So once again, you, you see overlay number four is now delegated. And if we look at inside of VMAX, you can see the first source here, overlay number four. We can turn that on and off. Um, so that's basically happening right here. We are doing two things. We are uh, turning the overlay on and we are assigning the source at the same time. But also in this um, far right side of the controller, you find that overlay one, two, and three, four have toggle buttons enabled. So I'm basically able now that I'm on overlay four and the source that I uh, selected last time to turn this on and off. So if I, if I choose a different source like that one, this is now what we are toggling on and off on this button over here. And the same for overlay two, of course, we can also do that. Overlay three has never been assigned yet. So because it, it hasn't, then we don't know. There's no source associated. But as soon as I select the source, you can see that it's picked over here. It says color, and now I can toggle this one on and off. So that's something that the panel actually remembers for you and um, something that was lately um, added to vMix. But before it was not in vMix, then we compensated for it in the configuration. And that's typically how we do configurations. We also try to sometimes make up for the design flaws that you might find in external systems. And we can easily do that with such an application like Reactor that is running this whole thing. If we move on to um, other things that we find in the bus menu, we find the multi-view destinations. And we have one on uh, input number 11. We see a little multi-view here, um, and that's destination number 11. So if I want to select that, I can actually go straight to it uh, right here. Uh, I've now selected number 11. I can then select which layer I want to adjust. And we currently are looking at layer number one that we can toggle on and off. So um, uh, sorry, uh, yeah. We are doing that here. So we now have layer number one. We are toggling layer number one on and off. And then if I go to layer two, we have the same thing. Uh, notice that my first press is actually uh, not aware that the multi-view is on. That is a vMix flaw. 
that I am I don't know the state of layer number four, for instance. Layer number four, you can obviously see that layer number four right here in the lower right corner is on, but I don't know because VMix won't tell me. So I need to assume that it's off until I press it on and then I turn it off. So I'm then keeping the state inside the controller. Sorry for that technical thing, but that's just a, a, a little detail of how it is sometimes to work with protocols and devices that uh, you need to make such workarounds. And, but the, the main point is that we are basically able up here to turn on and off the layers. We can also select the source of the layers either by the size or side of the buttons, or if we press that button, this becomes our delegation row for the source of layer number four. And as you can see, I, I'm just easily able to change what is on that layer. Uh, I can change here basically which layer I am uh, delegating uh, sources to and I could by this one change the multi-view destination. So that's multi-viewers hidden in the bus menu. Uh, let's move on to shortcuts. Uh, in shortcuts we are basically uh, breaking out the shortcuts that you find inside of vMix. So let's just quickly look inside here and then um, find the shortcut menu. Now, there are two cool things about this. The one is that we can easily add a shortcut by listening. So as I am finding a shortcut key, you find these six keys up here. If I press D3, it will detect D3. I can press OK to that. And I, now I can assign a functionality, whatever, to this one and just press OK. And now I have basically put stuff onto D3 by learning. The other keys you find here are basically your F1 to 24. And you see all the shortcuts that are mentioned here, they have in parentheses, otherwise they they show you that this is, uh, for instance, F19, that would be this one. And uh, let's look at some of those, like number six and number nine here. Um, let's find F9 because we see that F9 has a different color and that color can actually be picked inside of vMix. So this button allows us to pick a blue color instead, for instance, and also notice that um, we have uh, the ability to set a description. So I could change this uh, from test one to just a test in uppercase here and press OK. And then we'll see that the label inside the displays above the button is also changing. So color and text is coming out of vMix for our shortcuts and the functionality obviously can be assigned in here. A little cool and funny thing is that we are also able to import icons from uh, vMix over into the panels and show them in the displays here. Now, it's actually animated a little bit. And on the Crosspoint 48, which has a monochrome display, it's not going to be super useful. Um, actually, I think there's a software upgrade uh, on the way. If, if you get a Crosspoint 48 with a blue pill inside or the Airfly Pro, then you will have a little uh, grayscale thumbnail in the utility row of buttons. So there will be an improved display. But most likely animation of your video sources for your shortcuts is not the most important thing that you could think of in this case. But that's shortcuts for you. And then finally, in the menu, we can also work with audio. So with this one, the, this row becomes, once again, a delegation row where you see only the sources that can accept some kind of interaction with the audio. So if we press this one, I'm just selecting input number three as the audio source that we are now adjusting up here. And you see that we have VU metering that gives you us some kind of confidence monitoring that actually on input number three, we have some uh, audio uh, coming. That would be the, the input right here. And it's sometimes close to peaking, but we are fine with that. If we are not fine with it, we can adjust the volume by once again using the sides of the four-way button to do just that. So that's super easy and neat. And if I press the upper edge, I get more um, single steps, which are much coarser. You can, you can see it right here that we are making uh, larger steps in our adjustments of the audio source by that. I can adjust the balance. I can mute it. I can solo it. I can assign it to uh, different buses. Uh, so you can basically see that we have the different buses. And then if we are on uh, this one, we press the lower edge, we are uh, on and off on the bus. If we uh, press the sides, we are selecting the bus. So once again, that's the four-way button for you that has a lot of functionality packed into it like that. And then finally, there's the master volume here on this key that will be, um, let's just scroll a little bit here. You can see the master volume is basically always available on that key, regardless of what I'm selecting. But all the other first five keys are basically selected by what I choose on my utility row of buttons.
Now we have explored the menu that you find in the upper left corner of the controller. I just want to highlight that we have also a secret menu on all controllers, basically, that is called the engineering menu. And often, if you hold down shift, you find a key that is blinking green. And if you press that one, in this case, fade to black, then it brings up the engineering menu. And in the engineering menu, you can set the LED brightness, the display brightness, the dim time of the panel, the sleep time of the panel. And in the home screen, you can see the IP address of the panel. Plus, here, vMix related, you can select which of the three streams in vMix that is actually associated with the stream on off button over here. So right now, all three streams will be started when I press that button. But you can basically uh, tie these streams in and out of this functionality over here. So that's nice to know. And then there's a wacky feature, basically, which is for people who want to use this with multiple vMix systems. So inside Reactor, imagine that you went over here and you added a second vMix system with an IP address and you connect it to that. And yes, we could actually be connected to multiple vMix systems. Then this button would allow you to change over to vMix system number two. It would have device ID number two, and then the controller would control that. And then you could go back to vMix system number one. Most people get their mind blown with that function, like what am I gonna use it for? But um, some of you will really appreciate it and know that, oh, that's useful. If nothing else, it's telling something about how clever Reactor is designed and how flexible, how powerful it is to just expand and go beyond in all kinds of dimensions. So um, that's at least the takeaway message you can have. Uh, it will usually point to device index or to device ID number one uh, when you boot it up. So don't worry about that. And exiting the engineering menu is to just press that button that brought us into it. So you know that we have these panel management functions found inside the panel. Cameras is another thing that is noticeable about Airfly Pro. It has a section of uh, buttons and knobs and so on that could work with cameras. And we saw that we just brought in a camera because it's likely that you have some cameras on your production. And even though you have a separate operator for the ca uh, cameras, then if uh, he falls asleep or goes to the... Uh, toilet or whatever during the production, you can take over from here. So it's basically pressing that button. And that gives you a uh, section here that is now being taken over for panel or to, for camera management. We see uh, the cameras that we have already talked about, the, the Canon CIN300, we have the Panasonic camera here, we have the Sony, we have the JVC and the Bird Dog. So let's work with the Canon, which is uh, right over here. And now we can actually control this camera. Um, I have just the ability to show you that I can pan and tilt this camera, but that's also pretty neat. So with this little joystick here, I can actually move it around. So it's not as precise as a large analog joystick, but it's very good for what it is and very convenient to have at your hand. And it's also possible for you to actually recall presets. So I'm able to recall the number of presets that are stored inside the camera. Furthermore, you can actually, if you press the upper edge of this key, you can cycle through a number of things that you can set for this camera. So what you find is that everything that you normally find on a PDC WIS controller from Skaho is now packed into this section. And that means select settings from the camera is available. Like in this case, of, uh, which kind of focus mode are we in? Is it auto or manual focus? Is it... Um, a shooting mode is that full auto or is it manual shooting mode if i go to manual then i can adjust uh, over here different uh, aspects of that white balance mode can be set uh, auto iris can be set on and off so let's just set iris to manual and then we can cycle over and uh, see the iris can now be adjusted manually on this knob and so forth i could go on and on with that uh, we can also zoom using the zoom rocker. So we have a joystick pad and we have the zoom rocker for the cameras. So there you have it, PDC control integrated and you can just quickly exit it on this button here that will basically bring you back to a, a fully dedicated row of uh, utility buttons for bus delegation and so forth. The final thing I wanna talk about is the quick classes and they are found as an extension of the menu up here in the upper right upper left corner of the controller, and you find something called audio inputs and Kumo. So let's look at the Kumo. If we, if we select this one, you see that it affects what we are seeing on these buttons up here. And um, that's basically working with the Kumo video router. A video router is a device that has uh, video inputs and outputs and can 
move the input signal to a specific output and so on. You uh, probably know what that is. Let's say that we want to um, control output number four on the Kumo router. That's called JVC, that output. And now I can select the source for, um, no wait, the destination is called auxiliary. Uh, destination output number four and now I can select the input that should be routed to that output. Now we can do that from the panel when we have selected the Kumo quick class. If we press the upper edge I can now select that I want output four called aux and then as I go back to my uh, standard view I am now able to assign the, uh, the source to it which you can see that I'm basically doing with these buttons and I can also have multiple pages that allows me to go to source 15 for instance. So that's the Kumo um, functionality. And how did that come about? Well basically because we have added two quick class configurations by just means of, of pressing this add button and then we can add a, a new quick class. We have done that for the Kumo router and now I want to show you how that really looks. Uh, inside here that control of the ADA Kumo is simply selecting it in this list uh, under the, the, the functions called um, Skahoy controllers quick bar and there you have ADA Kumo but you also find a video hub for instance or Roland VP42H, OptoCore router, there's uh, ATEM audio input control etc. So there's a number of quick class configurations and that list is growing all the time to give you like small convenient controls of different devices that you want to mix in with your main task, which is in this case controlling vMix. So that's how we added that one. But more interestingly, there's one called audio inputs and that one is actually managing audio inputs on the ATEM switcher. I think there's a mistake here because audio inputs is doing the same as we have just right here. And notice what happens over here. Basically with audio inputs as a quick class, there's just the first key that is selecting the input in vMix that we want to control audio for on the remaining four keys. But if we are over here, then it basically corresponds to everything uh, that we had just before. We just moved one button to the left and then we have the master volume here. So I would say this is redundant. You don't need the quick class for audio inputs on this controller where you already have it broken out with delegation of the audio or the input source from these keys and, and that whole management. So what we want to do is to change this from audio inputs to what probably was the intention, namely to control the audio buses, because that's not made into the configuration here. So by just making this change, you'll see that on the controller, we are basically uh, having the quick class change over to managing our buses. Um, I think it still says the wrong thing, but this is a matter of how we are labeling it. So it says audio inputs, but I would say audio buses. So let's just type that in and exit this field and we'll see that it's changing in the display here. So now it says audio, audio buses and as I'm selecting that over here we are basically now having the functionality that we did not have already, namely the ability to pick a bus to adjust the volume of that bus. You can see the master volume once again here we can adjust that, we can mute it on and off etc. So these things how quick classes work and you can add more of these to have to mix in more functionality on the controller like that. Ladies and gentlemen, this was the Airfly Pro for vMix. As I mentioned, we can control ATEM switches, TriCaster, KROS, more switcher systems are coming. So it's a really, really flexible controller and the kind of layout that you see here is uh, many of those patterns are also found for other switches. So it also means that if you are in a in an environment where you're changing, you're using the same hardware panels from Skahoy to control many different systems, you can also expect some kind of interaction patterns to be the same. So we're also doing that to make it easier for the users. So basically ease of use with Blue Pill is a big thing. It's about how easy you can set up your inputs, how easy you can add cameras, how easy you can mix in a quick class configuration to have customization happening without it being on the tiniest details, but being like on a larger level, which is probably what fits your busy everyday life uh, best. And then it's also the power that we can connect to all these things, single cable, no need for computers, servers, or any middleware, and basically modularity, you can grow. So I hope you liked this video. I um, hope that you um, enjoyed the Airfly Pro. You can learn more online. You can follow us on social media. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you want to stay updated on all the content, new configurations and initiatives that you see coming out of Skahoy.